Welcome to Pennsylvania in Focus. I'm Anthony Hennon. Today's episode, we're focusing on the fallout and consequences after the Trump assassination attempt in Butler, Pennsylvania. Joining me today is the Center Square's Pennsylvania editor, Kristen Smith. Kristen, we saw um, a bit of a firing line in Congress uh, this week as lawmakers questioned the head of the U.S. Secret Service. What's happening and what were Pennsylvania's representatives interested in here? Sure. So the House Oversight Committee spent several hours grilling now former U.S. Secret Service Director Kim Cheadle about the agency's decisions leading up to the assassination attempt on Trump. The farther away we get from July 13th, the more uh, shocking the security failures have become, uh, so much so that Cheadle did resign earlier this week and, in fact, shortly after this House Oversight Committee hearing, where lawmakers on both sides of the aisle were incredibly frustrated with her, some point blank asking her, was there a conspiracy to kill Trump? And others telling her, you need to step down. Your answers here are not good. You're not doing well at this hearing. Pennsylvania lawmakers on the committee were less intense, I'll say. They still had pointed questions, but they weren't as openly hostile as some of the other lawmakers So we had Representative Scott Perry, who represents a district in central PA that includes Harrisburg. And then we had Representative Summer Lee, whose district is in western Pennsylvania in Pittsburgh. So they are ideologically very different. They are often opposed on most issues. However, when it comes to the assassination attempt, they both had a lot of very specific questions about at what point did the shooter go from being a suspicious person to a credible threat? And when does the Secret Service make a decision to shut down or postpone an an event or other questions like why were Secret Service agents who were a foot shorter than the president guarding him that day? Uh, How do they stop suspicious persons when they're moving through a crowd? Just all these very basic things that I think the general public, you don't think about when it goes into creating a security plan for a presidential rally. But things that obviously weren't thought of or were bad choices that were made that led to the shooter nearly killing Donald Trump. Did we get a lot of satisfying answers here? No. In a, I think it wasn't just Perry and Lee who didn't get answers. Pretty much anyone who asked a question didn't really get answers that were satisfying. Essentially, Kim Cheadle said she defended, first of all, questions about agents who were, quote unquote, too short to defend President Trump. She said that that's not true, that they were trained and perfectly capable. She didn't have a lot of answers as for why Thomas Crooks was spotted by Secret Service agents up to 30 minutes before he actually fired at the rally, why he didn't come become from suspicious to a threat. She said that there is a difference, although she didn't really explain what that difference was. Regarding questions about why There wasn't a sniper on the roof where Crooks was. There's been lots of debate about this. In one interview, Cheadle said it was because the the roof slope was too high, it's too dangerous. But to the House Oversight Committee a couple days ago, she said, oh, well, we had granted overhead support, so we didn't need a sniper. Exactly what she meant by overhead support, nobody knows. Was that, you know, planes? Was that drones? We don't know. She, She wouldn't clarify. Essentially, her answers were changing based on the nature of the question and in what I think was the most evasive answer she could provide. I think after this hearing, uh, lawmakers were threatening to take legal action against her for, for perjury, for lying under oath. So she faced intense pressure. She stepped down. I'm not sure if she's going to escape perjury charges or not, but the answers weren't just uh, confusing. They, For many lawmakers, they were a downright lie. So we have a bevy of angry federal officials, state officials, local officials. What jumps to my mind here is, you know, it's this a breakdown of federal, local and state law enforcement, you know, managing these high security events. And where do we go from here, be it for the Trump campaign or the Biden campaign and ensuring that something like this does not happen again? It's an excellent question. The Secret Service says they want to wait on a report, which is not expected for 60 days. Uh, They want to report of the event so that they can go back and change protocol to make the Secret Service stronger, as Cheadle said. But I think a lot of people on the outside, lawmakers, state and local officials, they kind of think that's BS, particularly given the fact that the buck stops with the Secret Service when it comes to guarding a presidential candidate. And so the Secret Service's attempts kind of deflect onto local or state police for not 
you know, stopping Thomas Crooks from opening fire. That's not something that's flying with a lot of officials. And so the path forward, I think a lot of the blame, despite uh, attempts to deflect, are falling at the at the feet of the Secret Service and to a lesser extent, the FBI, seen as the chief law enforcement agencies there that should have been, that have the experience and that should have been aware of Thomas Crooks and that should have been responding faster than they did. Well, Kristen, thanks for joining us today. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. 